Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Lisa Bug Yoga for hips and hands. So we are in the month of April, 2024. This is a short month for Lisa Bug classes because I'm gonna be on the road heading back to Minneapolis. Hard to believe already. So for class today, we are working on hip strengthening, hip opening and flexibility, hip stability. So really focusing on the muscles that support the hip joint itself and the range of motion of the hip. We're also focusing on hands. So if you have at home a little stress ball or something that you can give a squeeze during some of the exercises, this is gonna enhance what we do. I also have a chair and a block, a yoga strap and some padding for my knees because I'm six months post knee replacement. So getting down on my knees, I need a little bit of extra comfort. So what we're going to do, let's take that stress ball you have and I'd like for you to stand in mountain pose. And just briefly, what is mountain? Mountain, you can have your feet hips distance apart, or if you wanna challenge yourself a little more with your balance, come into that classical yoga with the feet tight together, the knees squeezing through the inner thighs, that's fine as well. So I want you to find that stable position for you. If you need a more solid base for balance, you can take your feet a little bit wider so you feel really solid here. And let's take that stress ball that we have, or just your palms together, and interlace your fingers. And then just press into the stress ball a little bit with the palms of your hands. And we are going to make a figure eight with our wrists. So we'll start by bringing the knuckles down, circle them off to the right side, down, circle off to the left. And this isn't through your shoulders. I'm not making this big movement with my arms. So keep your elbows tucked in so that all you're moving is range of motion of the wrists. Down through the middle, around the side. Down through the middle, around the side. And you can do this without the stress ball. Just press the heels of your hands together. And if you have the ball, try to give it a gentle little squeeze between the hands. And think about the position of mountain pose. So try not to slump, but really zip up through the core, lengthen through the crown of your head, standing really nice and tall. And then we're going to pause and reverse the direction. So if we start with our thumbs down toward, or the knuckles down toward the floor, we'll go up through the middle and around to the side. And up through the middle, around to the side. This is essentially just changing the direction of the circle. Now we're just starting, so this doesn't have to be really cranking that range of motion of your wrist so it feels uncomfortable. Just make this nice and easy. As Patanjali said in the Yoga Sutras, he said our yoga should be comfortable. So I want you to do this in a comfortable range of motion. Check with your shoulder blades, make sure they're not creeping up. So drop them down and slightly back towards one another. And we'll do just a couple more figure eights this direction. Good, let's do one more to each side. All right, stop in the center and look down at your hands. Which thumb is on top? because we always do this the same way. So what I want you to do is switch the thumbs and then switch the fingers. And that always feels very strange. Give it a little squeeze again. We are just gonna move side to side. The knuckles point to the right, the knuckles point to the left. And you'll notice what's happening with your wrists is when you go to the right side, your right wrist is in that flexed position and your other wrist is doing the exact opposite. So the motions of the wrists alternate one another. And just key into your breathing a little bit. Make sure you're not breathing shallow into your upper chest, but take that breath down into your lower lungs, into your belly a little bit. Just really starting to connect with a smooth breath. All right, come back to the center, and now your knuckles are going to go up 
and down. Up, so this is a lateral flexion of the wrist. And we're still slightly squeezing the stress ball or we're pressing the heels of the hands together. You could even use something like a little small washcloth or something, just something that has a little bit of give to it as you're doing this movement. Good job, let's do one more of each. Knuckles up and knuckles down. Good, relax those arms. Okay, for just a moment, I want you to open one hand and we're just going, I wanna demonstrate this. In fact, I'm going to come up to the camera a little bit closer. So we are going to be doing a pinching movement. But if you notice, if I pinch, I can also pinch like this. I don't want you to pinch like this and flex that first knuckle that way. When you pinch, I want you to make a little hook with your finger. So you're pushing down into the top of your finger without letting the knuckle splay out that way. All right, so what we're going to do is let's just set the, the ball down for a second. We're going to do that with both hands. So just take the hands out, slightly curve your fingers a little bit, and we'll press the index finger into the thumb and pinch and make your thumb rounded too. Try not to let your thumb flex wonky. And then press the middle finger into the thumb. Press the ring finger into the thumb. And then press the pinky finger into the thumb. Then spread fingers wide and we'll reverse this. Press the pinky finger into the thumb, making a little hook. Press the ring finger. Press the middle finger. And press the index finger. Open out and relax. So with some of the movements, I'm going to be cueing you to do that with your stress ball. So let's pick it back up, place it in your right hand and come to the top of your mat. Take your shoulders back and down. As you inhale, let the arms come forward any amount and press the palms together against that stress ball. If you don't have a ball, just press your palms, engage and then sit into chair pose. So your arms can be down here. You can pull them in toward the heart. You can really lengthen them up. This is all up to you, but I want you to press in on that ball. So as you stand back up, let your arms lower slightly. Come forward, press in. Exhale. Rise up. Exhale, press in. Two more, breathe in, sit back, breathe out. One more, breathe in and breathe out. Hold this here, draw your thumbs in towards your heart, keep pressing against the stress ball and turn your body toward the right side. We're in a rotated chair and then rotate to the other side. And nothing is changing in your body. So you have your knees directed over the feet. Let's rotate side to side at any pace and press in on the stress ball. Now you should have some slight flexion at your wrist. You can make it more than that if you just lift your elbows up, right? So I'm increasing the flexion of the wrist and I want you to make it wet, comfortable, right? So not a super heavy stretch. And look over that shoulder as you go each time. Let's take one more rotation to each side. Come back to center. Now, as you come out of chair pose, I'm gonna turn this way so you can see the angle of my elbows. Reach your arms up and let your wrist straighten. As you come down, pull your elbows out to the side and let your wrists flex and turn your fingertips down toward the floor. So we reach up. We pull in and rotate fingers down. We inhale. Exhale. And we'll do one more here. And then I wanna add the twist. So as you come up, 
straighten your wrists out. As you come down, turn right, point your fingers over the hip here. And then we reach up, inhale, pull the palms in, flip your fingers down and turn. And you're giving a little bit of pressure onto that stress ball. Good, keep going. I'm gonna come back to the top of my mat, continue. And you're just going at your own pace, side to side. And the depth of your chair pose, that's all up to you. What I wanna make sure is that you don't bend over too far. So this would not be a proper chair pose. So we need to keep that chest up, rotate, point the fingers down. Let's do one more to each side, right and left. I feel some work definitely in my forearms. Then let's come up and right down to the middle, flexing your wrists a little bit, press inward, hold. And then just stand. Take the stress ball in your right hand, give it a gentle squeeze, take your left foot and step back into an easy lunge. And I'm gonna put my left hand on my chair first let the right arm dangle and you're going to rotate up and down. Now for this movement, you can keep some tension on the stress ball if you'd like, or you can squeeze it as you're coming up and release it as you're going down. And this is the entire hand, all the fingers are squeezing. So if you don't have that stress ball, you're just making a fist. Let's do one more. All right, let's step that left foot back in and stand up. Now I'm gonna give you options also to go to a block or to the floor with this, but my first example is gonna be using that chair. Take the ball in your left hand, step your right foot back, easy lunge, Hand can come to the chair, block or floor. Reach the left hand down. I'm going to scoot a little bit away from the wall here. Rotate up and down. So those of you, and I know there's a handful in Lisa Book community that have shoulder problems, I'm trusting that you're using all of the options I've given you in the past. You don't have to reach that arm up all the way, maybe you're setting your hand on your shoulder, or maybe you're just lifting the arm part way up. It's not as much about how high the arm reaches here. We wanna get the body to twist and squeeze that stress ball. Let's do one more. And step in and stand back up. Switch the stress ball to your right hand. We are going to just squeeze the index finger toward the thumb. So you can let go with the rest of your fingers and give it a pinch. If you don't have the stress ball, index to thumb pinch. Step the left foot back. I'm gonna take it lower down to the floor, this time to my yoga block. This time we are going to twist and hold. So if you're only coming this far, that's fine. If you're putting your hand on your hip, you can still pinch the finger or you can take it all the way up and slightly pinch and release. Index finger to the thumb. Three, two, one, and lower the arm. Take your time to step back in and rise. Switch to the left hand, give that ball a little squeeze, step the right foot back, hand to the chair, block or floor, pinch the index finger and the thumb, and open up and hold. Now try not to take all the pressure onto your right hand. I want you using your core 
to help hold yourself up. Pinch and release for three and two and one. Lower down out of the twist. Step back in and rise. Okay, we've got three more on each side. We're pinching with the index finger and the thumb. Step the left foot back. I'm gonna go all the way to the floor this time. You can also lower your block a little bit lower. You can also set your back knee on the floor. Let's bring it up. Pinch, middle finger and thumb, three, two, one. Lower down, step back in. Since I stepped back far for the floor, it's gonna take me a couple of steps with that surgical knee and stand up. I'm gonna give you some time to catch up with me. So stand in a nice, strong, solid mountain. Pull your abs in, switch the stress ball to the left hand. Middle finger and the thumb are going to press. Step the right foot back. So if you're coming all the way down to the floor, you have to make a big step back to get your hip to drop down or use that block at any height. Let's lift it up. Middle finger pinches the thumb three, two, one. Lower that hand, step the back foot in and stand up. Just an aside, I have some arthritis in my left thumb. So I was really feeling that on that one. If you're feeling any discomfort, these pinches can be very light. It's just enough to strengthen, enough to make a contraction. Okay, the ball is in the left, right hand. Index finger, this is your weakest finger. I mean, sorry, not the index, the ring finger. That's a weak one. So press it, step the right foot back. No, left foot back. Yes, left one is first. And then we'll reach it up. Or anywhere you want to place that hand. Squeeze and release. Ring finger. Three. Wow, that's hard. Two. One. Lower down. And step in. Now what we're also doing in this lunge is we're strengthening the front hip and we're releasing the back hip flexor. So keep that in mind. You guys have done this lunge a lot, but I don't want you to just go through the motions and only think about the fingers and hands. Okay, index, or sorry, ring finger and thumb. Step the right foot back in your lunge. Choose how low you wanna go. So what we're doing is we're opening up this hip flexor on the right leg, strengthening the left hip. Twist it up and squeeze the ball, three, challenging, two, one, lower, and stand up. If your body's getting really tired of doing these lunges, on the last one, just do a little mini uh, split stance and turn it out here and do your, your little finger presses. Make this your practice. Okay, right hand, pinky finger and thumb are gonna squeeze that ball. Step the left foot back. Get into your lunge with whatever props you need. Get into your twist. Three squeezes, pinky finger to thumb. One, make sure you're making it like a hook. Two. Wow, this is challenging. Three, lower. Take your time to come in and stand. Last hand exercise. Left hand, pinky finger to the thumb, right foot steps back. This is a great lunge here on the chair. It's okay if you don't wanna come all the way down to the floor, absolutely fine. Let's get into our twist. The arm is in any comfortable spot. Thumb to pinky finger, three. Squeezing any amount, two. And one. Lower the arm. Step that back foot in. Rise up to mountain. 
then I'm just going to place my stress ball right on the chair in front of you. You can place it anywhere that works out great for you. And let's pull the arms back, open up the heart. This is in our nice um, airplane arm position. And then we are going to work on our balance today with a, a tree pose. Relax the arms down. So you can find a wall or a chair on your left hand. We're going to be using our right knee in tree. So I'm just going to hold my left hand here on the wall. Turn your toes, your feet out a little bit. So I'm making a small little V in Pilates. This is first position. So stay in that first position and then bring your knee straight ahead and touch your foot anywhere along the opposite leg here. So you can come up. It's just touching because we're going to use it to keep our foot where it is. And then from here, you're just going to rotate the knee out and back to neutral. A front view, rotate the knee out, back to neutral on your right side. So this is a clamshell. For those of you that have done clamshell with me, that's exactly what this exercise is. It's deep external rotation of the hip. Now, if you're struggling with balance, you can keep your big toe on the floor and just open that knee out and bring it in. Keep those hip bones straight ahead and then open the knee out to a comfortable place and hold. Maybe you can let go of the wall, bringing the palms to your heart center, or maybe reaching the arms up wherever you'd like here for your tree pose. Let's hold three breaths. And very carefully, we'll bring that knee back to the midline. Set the foot back down on the floor with the toes slightly turned out. Okay, let's go to the left side. I'm just going to turn my body so I can use my right hand on the wall. Good posture. Zip everything up. Let your foot slide up any height. Bring the knee straight ahead to start. Then rotate it out and bring it back into neutral for our standing clamshell. So it's the glute medius muscle that's doing this action as well as the deep external rotators such as the piriformis muscle. There's a few that contribute to this. And I have a lot, a lot of different range of motion from my right to left side because of a little hip arthritis in the right side. Let's hold it out. Find that place where you can stay. Maybe let go of the wall. Maybe reach up. You can use a finger on a wall or chair just to give you the help you need to stay here and stabilize three breaths. Looking straight ahead, eyes on the horizon, a nice drishti focal point. And on that last exhalation, bring the knee forward and step back in. Beautiful. All right, I'm facing back towards my chair. We're going to come into downward dog and I'll give you the first option to use the chair. We'll inhale up. Exhale, dive down, place your hands on the chair or all the way to the mat. Walk your feet back into your down dog and hold a nice stretch. I love the chair for this, especially for shoulder issues. You can take some pressure off your wrists as well here in your down dog. Then I just want you to shift your body weight from one foot to the other and start to walk your feet out or pedal them out. So let me move that out of the camera view. One knee bends while the other heel presses. And then we switch. Sometimes we call this walk the dog. Walk in the dog, walk in the dog. Just a couple more each side. And 
and then both heels down for a nice stretch. Push off of your hands. And then take your time to make your way down to all fours, your hands and knees. So I'm going to bring my little knee padding in here. I'm starting to be able to put a little bit more pressure on that surgical knee, which is kind of cool, but I still need the padding. I'm actually further along than I thought I would be with that in the surgery. Okay, so hands and knees here. Now, if your wrists are bothering you here, we do what we call fists for wrists. So you can make a fist and you can put your knuckles on the floor. This makes your wrist straight. Oh, that feels really nice. But then sometimes your fingers start to bother you. So I want you to do what feels best here for your wrists. We'll take the right leg straight back. Bend your knee about 90 degrees so your heel is pressing up toward the ceiling. And we are going to squeeze the glute and lift the leg up and slightly down. So we are strengthening the back of the hip, the glute muscle. And in turn, we're stretching and releasing the front of the hip, the hip flexor. Scoop your abs in so you're not sagging down. Pull everything in, make that neutral spine. And if you want a little bit more core, you're going to take your left hand off the floor, reach it out with your thumb rotated up. Well, let's get about five more lifts. If you need to come down to an elbow, if the wrists and shoulders just aren't working for this, or you can also do this standing up with your hands on your chair. All right, let's lower back down and then take a break. Maybe it's child's pose or cat stretch. Perhaps you'd like to circle out the wrists a little bit here. Everybody's body needs a, something a little bit different when we're taking a break. So that's all up to you. All right, when you're ready, let's move to the other side. Nice balanced hands and knees. Take the left leg straight back. Make sure your left hip doesn't rotate up. So keep it level with the floor. Bend your knee about 90 degrees. Flex your ankle. Push your heel up to the ceiling and down any amount. Squeezing the glute, releasing the hip flexor. Then for a little bit more core and balance, we take the right hand reaching it forward. Feeling this a little bit as well in my hamstring just to keep my knee bent about 90 degrees after the knee replacement. So that's a nice challenge. You might be feeling some of that as well. Let's get about five more lifts. Really lock the core down so there's nothing moving through your torso. Slightly pausing that contraction at the top, really squeezing. Let's get two more. And one. And let's lower everything down. Take the break you need. Sometimes a cat stretch is really nice here where we just tuck the tailbone under and let the lower back release. All right, come back to your neutral spine. Take your right leg straight back behind you, point your toes down. And you can even kind of look underneath to see if your toes are down because sometimes they want to turn out to the side. So keep them down. We're going to come into a hip abduction so the leg goes out and then it crosses behind a little. So today we're not going to rotate the waist because when the leg comes behind, I want you to feel a slight release through your IT band. When we go away, this is hip abduction. When we come across, it's adduction. And a big challenge would be to pick your left hand off the mat. Outer thigh, inner thigh. Core is really locked down. Let's get three more. Good job. And two. Last one. 
Let that leg come back to neutral. Set the hand and knee back down onto the mat. Take your break, whatever you need. My elbows feel like they want to come down to the floor and totally release any pressure off my hands right now. All right, only one more exercise on hands and knees, the other side. If you need to make those fists for wrists, get into that position. Take your left leg straight back. Make sure your pelvis is level across and your toes are down. So the toes are gonna stay down as we open the leg out to the side. Sometimes the toes wanna lead and we wanna turn the hips. So keep the toes down, let the leg go out. Abduction. And then across the supporting foot. And out. And across. Check with your spinal alignment and really check with your cervical spine because sometimes our head starts to do funky things here. We either look forward because we're trying to see the computer screen or we drop our head down because our neck muscles are getting really tired. So just bring your head right to neutral. Let's do three more moving out. Oh, let's try taking the right hand off the floor. You were already doing that, weren't you? Yes, you were. I needed a little reminder. Two more. And one more. Come back to neutral with the leg. Lower down and take your break. Very nice. So we are going to move into a, a supine position laying on our back. So I'm gonna give you a, a nice amount of time to come up, get yourself to rolling over and get your body into a comfortable place. You might need a little bit of a cushion behind your head to keep a neutral spine. So have that at the ready. And then make sure that you have your yoga strap within reach. And if you don't have one, you can use a hand towel from the kitchen, you can use a belt, any other kind of strap, a winter scarf. Okay. So we're just going to start with our feet flat on the floor, knees bent. We've been working already a little bit today on spinal extension. When we were on all fours and pushed the heel up to the ceiling, we were engaging the glutes to open up the hip flexors. And we're gonna do that through our bridge today. So feet about hips distance apart. Turn your palms up on the mat so you're not pushing down into the mat with your upper body. Just relax your arms and shoulders. And then we'll lift the hips up off the floor any amount. Push down into the floor with your feet. Squeeze your glutes, tensing those muscles. And then we'll lower back down. So we're going to do several different sets of bridging. And I just want you to go at your own pace. I'm not going to cue you a speed. You can hold at the top a while or you can lift and lower very rhythmic movement. Exhaling as you come up where that work is. And inhaling to come back down. If you want a little bit more work, just come down maybe halfway so you still have the muscles loaded. Let's get one more bridge. And then come down. Okay, walk your feet away from your body a little bit, maybe about one step a piece and pull your toes up off the floor. So now you're in dorsiflexion, your heels are on the mat and lift up into bridge. Let's hold it first. What do you feel that's different? If you were to say, I feel more hamstring, the back of the leg, you would probably be right. This is a little bit more hamstring in this hip extension than it is in, in your glutes. Glutes are still the prime mover here, but the hamstring is contributing more because the legs are a little bit straighter. 
Okay, let's come down and up at any pace you want to go. And I'm doing what's called a hip lifting bridge. Um, this is more of a Pilates terminology, but I'm keeping my spine neutral as I'm coming up. I'm not doing a hip rolling bridge, which would be coming up one vertebra at a time. Not that that's a bad thing. That's a great thing, but not quite what we're working on today. I want to put all the emphasis in your hips, not necessarily in your spine articulating. Good. Let's lift one more time. And come down. Now, if that was really challenging, I want you to stay where you're at or you can walk your feet a little bit further away from you. This is gonna be really challenging for the hamstrings, depending on how far away you are from your body. Palms are up, shoulder blades are pulled back toward the earth, and let's lift. Now, sometimes when we do this, the hamstring really complains, and you might even get a cramp in the back of your leg. So go real slow. If that happens, just stop doing what you're doing and stretch out the back of your leg. You also might notice you're not coming up as far when your legs are further away from you. And we'll do a few more here. Ooh, great hamstring training. Hip extension. Two more reps. And one more. Come back down. Walk those heels back in. But I want you to keep your toes up. Bring your feet a little closer together. Maybe they're almost touching. And then we'll take the left knee, bring it up, keep the foot flexed, rotate the ankle across the right thigh so we're in a figure four and just let this knee open out you can give it a little bit of a gentle nudge by pressing with your left hand there and then if you just want to enjoy a stretch here i'm going to give you two op options stretching or strengthening so if you want to be stretching you're going to lift the knees up toward your chest and do your figure four stretch if you want to work on strengthening a little more your right heel stays on the mat and we are going to lift up into a single leg bridge. Let's do maybe six to eight repetitions. Or you can do half and half, maybe three or four single leg bridges and then pull your knees up and do the stretch. Good, maybe two or three more. And then everyone brings the knees up. And then we'll lower back down. Good, uncross. Feet are fairly close together. Heels are on the floor, toes are up. Take the right knee up. Bring the ankle across the left thigh. You might wanna give this knee a little nudge out. This is the side I'm really tight on, so I try to be really careful with that range of motion. Okay, if you want to be stretching, pull your knees up for figure four. If you want to be strengthening, let's go ahead and lift the hips up. Single leg bridge. And the bridge doesn't have to be high. It's not a big back bend. That's not the focus of this bridge. It's of strengthening the hip through hip extension and slightly releasing the hip flexor. Maybe about three more, or if you've had enough of those, you can come into your figure four stretch. Beautiful. All right, let's all take that stretch together, bringing the knees up any amount. Lower back is nicely pressed into the mat.
and then we'll lower down and uncross. Okay, we are going to stretch the IT band with your yoga strap. Now, sometimes this stretch can be bothersome to your lower back. So if you need to, I want you to put your left foot up on your chair. This is going to keep your pelvis in a little bit more of a posterior tilt. Otherwise, your left foot can go all the way down to the ground, but make sure you're not feeling any stress in your low back here. And let's take the right foot into the yoga strap. And then extend your leg up. We're just gonna start with the hamstring first. And I want you to find a comfortable stretch. So if already you're thinking, oh my gosh, this is not gonna work for me or my leg is all shaking, then lower it down a substantial amount. <clears throat> and then just start slowing down your breathing and very, very slowly start to bring it up. And then when you feel that place where the stretch is comfortable, that's where I want you to hold it. Now let's hold the yoga strap with the opposite hand. So the left hand is going to hold the strap. The right hand is going to come out and either brace your elbow to the floor, or your entire hand. And this will try to help you to keep your body from twisting. And all we're going to do is draw that right leg slightly to the left without letting your right hip come off the floor. And it might be a very small amount. So we're just getting into that iliotibial band. And if you have a really tight IT band or TFL, tensor fascia lata, which is the muscle right above the IT band, this could be really intense. And then I always like to add a rotation inward of the foot. So looking at your foot, just turn your toes toward the left. And that's going to get the outside of the shin and a little bit of a stretch there. Or maybe a lot of bit of a stretch. Now, if you need to take a break on this, please do come back in. Otherwise, let's try holding about another minute. I'm just going to set my watch here. If you need to adjust the height of the leg, maybe after you're there a little bit, you can bring it up a little higher or across a little deeper but let it be your journey. And let your own body write the story of your journey. So not about what I'm doing or what you've done in the past when you were 20. That chapter is behind us. So give yourself permission to be here in the present moment where your body is today. That's hard to do sometimes. Last five seconds. And then come back to the center. Allow that knee to bend very slowly, releasing the yoga strap. And then I'm not going to go right into the other side really quickly. I want to give you some time to just pause. And when you pause, you might have both legs straight, both legs on the chair. Maybe you're hugging your knees up into your chest. And just take a moment and notice what you're feeling from the right side of your body to the left. What are those sensations that are happening now? And kind of let them start to go away a little bit. Because if our brain is still thinking about what we just did on the right side and we go really fast to the left, it can't adequately switch to focusing on the left side and controlling our range of motion. So we just want to let those little sensations dissipate. Then again, if you have lower back problems, you're going to put your right foot up onto your chair, either with a straight or bent leg or you can extend your right leg all the way down. You can bend your right knee a little bit as well. That's great. Let's get that yoga strap ready on the left side. 
And then slowly extend that leg up. If your hamstring disagrees, then lower your leg quite a bit. And then just very, very slowly start to bring it up until you get to that comfortable range of motion. There's no strain, no stress, no fighting the stretch, no gripping, no tensing anywhere. Now the opposite hand will hold the strap. So right hand holds, left elbow comes out to brace. So your shoulder blades stay firmly in the floor as well as your hips. And we'll start, start to drag that leg across over to the right side, just a little. Ooh, yeah. Good morning to the IT band and the TFL. Then if you want to add that little inward rotation of your foot, you're going to turn it in. That gets the peroneus longus muscle and a little bit of the anterior tibialis. There's your kinesiology lesson for the day. Can you relax here? If you can't, let out the tension a little bit. If you are relaxed and you feel like you can go a little deeper, go ahead and take it there. And we've got a little under a minute left on this side. Come back into your breath. Deep inhalation, long, slow exhalation through the nose or mouth. Try to relax your face, your jaw, your forehead. Try not to wrinkle up that space between your eyebrows. Just a few more gentle breaths. Ten seconds. And slowly we'll drag back to the midline. Allow your knee to start to bend as you release the yoga strap. And again, no rush to get to the next pose. Take a moment and just relax wherever it feels good for your body. So you can check in on those sensations you're feeling and start to let them dissipate. Sometimes our back can be a little cranky, laying in Shavasana. So I'm going to give you two options here for uh, modifications of our Shavasana. The first one is to bend both knees, set your feet on the floor, and walk them kind of wide and let your knees fold in and just tap into one another. And sometimes that feels great on your low back. When the knees are touching, we don't have to work the muscles of our hips much. We can just relax in this position. Another option is our reclined bound angle pose or Supta Baddha Konasana. We can bring the knees to open and the soles of the feet to touch. And then we just relax the inner thighs and let gravity gently open the knees. Or we can lengthen the legs for our traditional Shavasana pose, or you can sit up and sit in your chair for a seated meditation. And we will close our practice today with a short meta meditation. For just a moment, we will close the eyes and see through uh, an imaginary mirror and see your face. But I want you to see 
yourself uh, further down the road in life, maybe 10 years. And see where you would like to be at this place in life. Maybe there's a little bit more gray in your hair or a few more wrinkles. But I'd like to see yourself with a strong skeleton. Strong stature, good posture. Strong muscles. And may you be healthy, happy, and at peace. And then in your mind's eye mirror, picture someone in your life that you'd like to focus on for a moment. Maybe someone very close to you or just an acquaintance. See their face. You can picture them today or maybe a few years down the road and picture them with strong stature. Good posture, a smile, ease of movement. May they be healthy, happy, and at peace. And finally, we'll collectively focus on this wonderful group that we've created since COVID began, the Lisa Bug community. Maybe you're picking someone's face or just seeing our group collectively as a whole. Our goal is to stay healthy and vibrant in our later years, to increase our longevity and our well being. So we see our community active and strong in stature, good posture, strong muscles, strong bones, a smile on our faces. May we all be healthy, happy, and at peace. Let's begin to find some small movement through our body as we prepare to come out of our Shavasana. Maybe we close our knees back together, hug them into our chest, wiggle the fingers and toes, perhaps move the head from side to side. And then in your own time, Come up to a comfortable seat for us to close our practice together. Let's take a breath with one another. Sweep the arms out and up. Allow the palms to press. The thumbs draw down to touch the sternum. This is our Anjali Mudra. The Mudra means a sign or symbol. And the Anjali Mudra expresses gratitude and honor. And it, it is with deep gratitude and honor that I bring this class to you today. And I appreciate each and every one of you in the Lisa Book community and beyond. And the light and joy that honors that is in me honors the light and joy in each and every